allowed to Let's ask go. anything yet. Uh, so um, we have black children that's reading on the fourth grade reading level. What? And so now you're saying that the kids that are reading on a fourth grade lead. Yeah. You see that? He said that. And then the other black man who's, who's speaking about coding said, yeah. And Kevin Samuel says, yeah. That's why black boys are reading at the fourth grade level. That's why. I so um, we have black children that's reading on the fourth grade reading level. If you don't get that bullshit out of my face, bitch. What did that have to do with this man? What he just said? Yeah. So now you're saying that the kids that are reading on the fourth grade. This is a point that we have to address that we can't let slide anymore. And this is the main purpose of this video because Tommy spoke about it in this video. I addressed it in the video that he's reacting to. This is propaganda that too many people repeat. Kevin Samuels has repeated this, this propaganda before. Many black creators on YouTube have repeated this propaganda. No shade to Kevin Samuels. I support Kevin Samuels. Uh, but, you know, he got trapped by it too. He got caught by the trap. Ah. It's all cap. Let's get into it. Let's break down why. Cap. You see that? He said that and he said, yeah. They're reading at a fourth grade re reading level. So black boys are reading at a fourth grade. Okay, so he kind of fast forwarded. Oh, but he pulled it back. Let's see what he plays. He read reading level. So kid, black boys in grade two are reading at the fourth grade reading level. Am I an idiot or am I missing something? You're not, bro. He doesn't answer the question or he doesn't. Right. He, ne he never addresses it. And okay, so let's get to what I actually said because he kind of fast forwarded over my point. And everybody in our communities just says, yeah, we just go with that. We allowed that propaganda to stick. It doesn't even make sense logically. Black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level. Which black boys? Black boys in the ninth grade? Black boys in the eighth grade? How far are they behind? Black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level. So kid, black boys in grade two are reading at the fourth grade reading level? Am I an idiot or am I missing something? I guarantee you, if you go ask him, the brother's saying, wait a minute. If black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level, can he explain this? Like, where did he get this stat from? What does it mean? Are you saying black boys in the sixth grade are reading at a fourth grade level? Ninth grade are reading at a fourth grade level? Twelfth grade? Because you're saying boys. So where are you talking about? What? what? What are we talking about? Nobody ever stopped and logically thought about this. Which black boys? Black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level. What black boys? He could have been talking about black boys in the fourth grade. <laughs> Got he. <laughs> he could have been talking about black boys in the second grade. <laughs> he doesn't say it. And he can't back it up. Ask him to put together the show to back up the stack. So he's just saying things that he heard somebody else say, so he's repeating it. Yo. Game Dreamer 58. He's pushing trades and coding since day one and never switched up. Listen, let me put me back on the big screen because I've been talking way more than Tommy's been talking. He's been pushing this since day one, right? Dame Dash has been pushing being an entrepreneur, being an owner, being a owner of your own business, all that shit from day one. What has Dame Dash been doing from day one? Being an owner, being an entrepreneur, speaking that into his children. He spoke about his children being that. His children come to the forefront. His son is on growing up hip hop. What is he? An entrepreneur. To this day. A businessman. To this Everything day. Everything Dame Dash spoke about, his son is the same. To this and day. He put his son on game. Kwame speaks all this stuff, but Kwame doesn't know anything about coding. Stupid. Nothing, nothing about developing, coding, programming, the practical uses, nothing. And he's pushing, oh, the school should teach our, our kids this. And then we go to this tired ass argument about, oh, black boys are reading at a fourth grade reading level, which makes no sense. And I don't even know why people just jump into that argument because which black boys, which them, what are we even talking about? Are black boys at, at 10th grade reading at a fourth grade reading level? We just take these dumbass prop. We take dumbass propaganda and repeat it aggressively. And I don't understand it. If you don't get that bullshit, I actually looked that up because I wanted to do a video breaking down exactly where that comes from. And what I actually found out that black, not black boys, black children, black boys and girls 
are underperforming on all levels what? in science, technology, uh, English, and math. Underperforming. <gasps> underperforming on all levels. So we want to throw coding in schools instead of putting the responsibility and accountability on parents teaching their kids to give them a competitive edge when they're underperforming. This shit is stupid. <laughs> and if you guys don't want to take accountability, then you're going to stay at the bottom. <laughs> you're going to stay looking for uh, uh, this Jesus Christ savior type of person to come and save y'all niggas. Like, makes sense, man. Crying to me and I'm not Don't get it. I don't get it. Breakdown Friday, Joseph Ward, Professor Carl Tom Jones, Patrick Irvin here. We are here to talk about and break down and 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 put some critical thinking to can black boys read? Is it a reading issue with just black boys or is it a reading issue with black children? Period. What's going on in the school systems? What's going on in the homes? What's going on in the, in the communities? Are black children underperforming? And if they are, who are they? What what does it mean that black children are underperforming? Um, it was a lot going on in this video. Yeah, I'm focusing on the the. <laughs> I'm focusing on the reading statistics and stuff. I mean, because I mean, because if we, if you wanted to nitpick, I mean, Kwame Brown, I'm sure Kwame Brown has access to resources to teach coding to make sure kids get coding. I'm sure he does. But um, the young man is correct in pointing out that black boys aren't just underperforming as far as reading. By themselves black children are underperforming and i get what he was saying well which group of black boys now it's interesting he took that route to say well which group of black boys are, are underperforming and then on the screen he he had the naep uh he said look at the naep for the statistics and then says well black children are underperforming well which black i mean you kind of did the same thing am i am i tripping or didn't he do didn't he do the same thing he was calling them out for but 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 so what so because if somebody wanted to be nitpicking well which which black children are underperforming now i so happen to have the statistics pulled up so we're gonna get into them but it's just you know i you know <laughs> what are we doing here man what are we doing here mm -hmm. go ahead Pat. go ahead yeah. go ahead say it say it say it <clears throat> pc you want you want to <laughs> I went first last time. Go ahead, PC. I see you just wet your whistle. Go ahead, man. Now, uh, you know, and, and I watched that, that clip a few times. Sometimes <laughs> I think I think we're so we, we just we just try to be so smart that we just that we're stupid. Um that I don't understand what point he was trying to make, you know, in regards to that just dealing with what we just watched in that clip and every and, and the uh, response. I don't know what point he was trying to make um, in regards to, okay, if you want to say that you want more clarity in regards to who's performing at a fourth grade level. I get that. Grade, I understand that. We, we with you on that. We with you on that. Because I've, I've, myself, I've even repeated that uh, black boys read at a fourth grade level. So, yeah, we need more clarity on that because we, I've, I've even said that. Right. Um and and so if it's propaganda, then where's your evidence to prove it to the contrary? Because mm -hmm. if you're gonna state that, then you should have some some stats that you can pull up to specify which group it is. And if it's propaganda, then you should be able to use use the evidence via some statistics, some research that's been done to to show that it's not true that black boys are not reading at a fourth grade level or if we want to be or we want to specify which black boys it is you know um, academically we know that the children are tested at four different levels the standard testing fourth, um, fourth grade yeah fourth eighth and twelfth so um if you're talking about twelfth graders not being able to read at a fourth grade level I mean when you think about it if a child can't read a newspaper they can't read at a fourth grade level Right. Newspapers yeah. are printed at a fourth grade level. The New York Times, all the major news newspapers are printed at a fourth grade level. 
That's because historically we come from a group of people, all Americans, who had the inability to read a hundred years ago. So therefore they had to simplify the verbiage in the newspapers in order to get a message across unless they wanted to continue to use political comics, which we now professionally refer to as comic strip. So if, if you want to make that argument that a child can't read a newspaper and that's going to be the gate, fine. Um, a graduate of high school, because they've removed the, the specifications over the last decade or so where children no longer have to achieve a certain type of academic prowess in terms of uh, graduating with a, a high school diploma. That you get, instead of getting a high school diploma, that you can get a certificate of completion. Basically saying we babysat you for, we babysat you for 12 years and here, you know, here's your certificate because you completed the course, but you didn't complete it with the certification that we would normally give to a high school graduate. So there's a lot of different things that we can go by but I just was back when watching that shit gave me a headache. Um, <clears throat> because I was just, you know, when I see us get animated like that, it's like we're really enthusiastic to try to drive a point home. We just spend a whole lot of time not saying the damn thing. And I don't know the brother. Um, you know, so I don't want to, because, you know, people see this and this and then they take it somewhere else. This, that's not the point. I would give this critique to this brother if we were sitting in the same room. You know, <clears throat> what's your point? You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I think we just like nitpicking with other black people. And that's the shit I don't really get down with. Um, I'll never see black people challenging non-blacks who cite the same statistics about these particular situations. Um, if we want to talk about the fact that uh, black children uh, are, are struggling academically, that's no secret. That's been going on for, you know, um, you know, I'm saying five to six decades ever since immigration took place. Um, we, we, if we want to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, we want to talk about uh, what, uh, who was the brother? Uh, um, Brown. Kwame Brown was talking about in terms of introducing um, coding in, in STEM. Well, that's like teaching a language. The younger you start teaching a child a language, the quicker they are to pick up one. Coding is a language. Understanding how to be an engineer in STEM is, is, is a language, sort of. So if you start teaching them at a younger age, then statistics have shown, stats have actually shown that those students who learn it at a younger age are more ad adapt to becoming an engineer in society. But it's but but it's it's, 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 it's it's like a moot point if you're talking about a man who has millions of dollars. This man has access to resources. This man has access to resources. Resources. Children can get coding. If Kwame Brown in his area you want to make sure children get access to coding and be able to learn coding, Kwame Brown can do that. That's a so, moot point. A moot point, rather how they say it. We have grassroots folks. My brother Q Butter out of Brooklyn, who runs the Zyax Institute, is doing it as a, a, a you know, um, he has a homeschool initiative program that's been working. They just graduated 300 children last year in Atlanta. Um, they, they are starting children off with STEM. I recently went to, I told y'all before, he invited us to go to New York to, um, and it, to, to have a, to an all black science fair. And they're having another one in December. So if anybody's interested, December 16th, hit me up. They're having another one in Brooklyn, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in, um, in December. But he had a four-year-old who designed uh, a, a, a car that ran off of AI. You know what I'm saying? A four-year-old. So if you got a four-year-old four -year -old having cars run off of AI and voice command, things of that nature, then... And that's just an example. That's just a you know a microcosm of what could happen if you expose our children to this at a young age. Um, so I, I'm just trying to figure out why. What was the big like you know we we get all mustered up and, and boisterous over you know a point. You know what I'm saying where we're about to have the conniption over over nitpicking. You know what I'm saying. And then Tommy Sotomayor, come on man, I mean, that man has met a brother that he doesn't get along with. 
<laughs> so. but, but especially if the if the point is trying to get at whether black whether it's black boys are reading at a fourth grade level or are black children not reading at proficient levels that well, clip didn't help us get into that right fully. and to mention kevin samuel <clears throat> excuse me trying to, <laughs> trying to clear my throat here um to mention kevin samuel well kevin samuels wasn't wasn't speaking to it from that perspective when kevin samuels was speaking to it kevin samuels was saying we don't invest in black boys and to identify that black boys are reading at a fourth grade level and when you go to their homes or their parents typically um they're being rewarded with like jordans and video games and nice clothes but nobody is spending time on teaching or investing into our boys that was the point kevin sanders was making about it so you know it's also disingenuous to take those short little blurbs blurb and, and then try to create an argument around something without having the context so we don't even know the full context of why Kwame Brown was having that discussion in the first place based on that clip. So, you know. Right, right. But, you know, I, I picked that clip because I like to start shit a little bit. <laughs> but, but, but you know, I, I like to have a fun way of getting into the point of us, you know, ultimately talking about where are our children on this on, on the reading spectrum? Are, are our children doing horrible are our children doing great are they just behind is it historical like where are where do our children sit pat uh what you got <laughs> chime in my brother no i mean i agree with pete matter of fact when you shared it in the chat we have i um because i usually don't watch them but for whatever reason i clicked on this because i like my reactions to be authentic i clicked on this one and i put in the comments like i I don't know what this dude is trying to say. Like, I'm confused. Like, what the hell is happening here? Because, sir, and, like, I give people the same energy they put out. You was all excited and animated to shit on the statistics, and then you turn around and presented your same dumbass point. The same way the same way like so because and let's get into this like one specifically stupid point that you made since black people love to bring up dumbass what i don't agree with um i don't disagree with i do think black people like to hop on silly narratives but i don't have a problem with somebody critiquing me the same way that i critique other people so i'm giving you that same energy because you you brought up a particularly dumbass point um, which was when you said parents want schools to offer uh, skills and services and things of that nature um, when they should be offering that at home. Now, when it comes to general history, I agree with that. When we talk about skills-based learning, which is what reading is. That's a skill-based learning thing. If you can't read, can't teach you how to read. That's how that works. Coding is a skills-based learning thing. The mother know how to code, they can't teach another mother how to code. Comprehension is a skills-based activity. If a mother comprehend, you, you, you feel the pattern? So you are asking parents who we know are struggling with reading struggling with comprehension and don't even really know what coding is to teach kids how to do these things at home. Bro, what the fuck smoking like what is happening here did i miss the part of the conversation where we understood that black parents knew how to read comprehend and code at home like that those were common skills in the black because schools are supposed to provide things that a parent can't provide at home in terms of educational resources. I one of the benefits of having a public school. Cool. You got dumbass parents like this dude's children do. Then you can come to school and get non dumbass learning from people that are educated and know how to, how to do the shit that your dumbass parent don't know how to do. Like think which this dumbass mother don't know how to do. I'm sorry, did I just get animated as a black person 
and hop all on top of a narrative that's dumb as hell and don't make sense my apologies brother uh here's what i'm saying i don't know what i was saying what the f dame dash have to do with any goddamn thing dame dash is an entrepreneur and look he's been pushing entrepreneurship the whole time and his son and his son and they what the f what does that have to do with the price of tea in china bro what are you saying what are you talking about so 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 okay okay so by that logic children can only be what their parents are is that what you're saying so by that logic your children are gonna be dumbass youtubers you just want to start saying? beef huh <laughs> you just want to start beef <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just care like, nah, like he wants to say black people are dumb as hell, and we just be jumping on narratives and all this other shit, right? Like, if you go, if you're gonna critique somebody in that way, be cool with that smoke being thrown back at you. Is all I'm really getting at, bro. What you said, I'm not saying you didn't have a point. I'm saying you didn't make one. <laughs> all right, black children uh, reading. <laughs> oh so anyways all right thank you bringing it That's back what we're here so, for. so when it comes to black children reading it's not just black boys though it's it's like black children I, it's black children i pulled up an article from dr juwanza um kunjufu who is also kind of one of the early propagators of um the black boys failing to be people. adequately academically prepared and he also has uh, reports and studies and, and books and articles and information and seminars talking about how black girls are also being failed. There's one in particular, I believe it was, why are only 18% of black females proficient in reading, written by Dr. Juwanza Kunjufu. So this is not an issue of just black boys. This is an issue where black children Right. are being handicapped i think the bigger issue here is one that J pc was making with regards to the point that kevin samuels was making which is that going back to the 50s and 60s um in particular the 60s and 70s black women have been ushered into academic spaces and they've been on the in terms of the community involvement and resources and support and social engagement they've been pushed into college and higher education and higher standards of academics Meanwhile, black boys have been pushed into the uh, area of trade schools and, and, and skills until all the way up until I say maybe about the 80s and 90s, where black boys stopped being pushed in any direction, which led us to the direction we're at now, where black women have still been ushered into college at high rates. And so they're getting these bachelor's degrees. And that's the, if we're looking at the statistics again, that's really where it stops. Because when you go to master's and PhDs, miraculously, uh, black men catch up with women in terms of attainment. It's only in bachelor's degrees that black women are out attaining black men. At least last time I looked at the statistics. But that speaks to the social push that black women get to get involved in higher education. That is not an equal push towards black men. So I like what PC pointed out, that's a very valid and powerful point in terms of the difference in outcomes. But in terms of the difference in like the statistic at eighth grade, uh, you know, more black children are reading at a fourth grade level or can't read at a fourth grade level than in other groups. That's valid. And it's been proven time and time and time again. And I mean, it, we can even say it's valid based on this video because he couldn't disprove it so he tried to obfuscate so, y'all know what i'm saying <laughs> obfuscate but no yeah, yeah, um <laughs> but you put up a good point pat about uh that first of all pat for that breakdown man we, we, we need to you know we need to yeah we're yeah, we gonna we're gonna have to fight but now <laughs> <laughs> catch me outside um <laughs> so but the point you made about pushing academically of the women to achieve more. I mean, there were so many programs put in place for women, specifically women in our community. There was the welfare to work. And, there, and I'm not going to say it like it was just specifically for black women because then people could start that reparations bullshit. That wasn't reparations. 
All right. I'm just <laughs> And I'm not calling it reparations bullshit. I'm just saying people will say, see, black people got welfare and that's reparate. No, nah, that's not reparation. Nah, nah, that's so I just wanted to clear that out. But black women were one, one of the, they were the one group that took advantage of the welfare to work this um, program. And, and, and just, just the, welfare wasn't specifically for black women. Welfare was for people, Americans. Right, right, mm-hmm. right, right. Mm-hmm. So they took advantage of that and they were able to, uh, aspire and do good things and i'm not mad about that part um the part i you know look at is also at that particular time as pat said the males and that was just not just black males all males are pushed into trades mm-hmm. because if you look at the things that keep our um our, our society functioning you need trade skills trades yeah. tradesmen. you need skilled electricians you need skilled um plumbers you need skilled um, hand laborers and, no, and those skills were introduced to uh, in, in schools. But what happened was, um, so many black men were, um, were, were black boys were graduating with t- certification in machinery, certification and automotive technology. That um, <clears throat> white unions started pressuring um, inner cities to um, take those programs out of the school. And so that along the line with the increase of, you know, you, you take that out and you remove the factories and the warehouses um, that, that um, and the automotive plants out of the urban setting, you replace that with drugs and that becomes a staple, um, a staple income in our community. You know, um, a lot of, 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 of what happened was if I'm selling drugs, what do I need to go to school for? And it's not even that the children are illiterate or um, it's not that they're not smart, but a lot of them learn the language of the streets. Mm-hmm. So they don't have to learn the language of the school because they don't need that to survive on the street. And one clear thing, you know, one example I can provide is um, <clears throat> during a Saturday program, I was assigned as a teacher to teach math. Anybody knows me know that I am not great at mathematics, but I do understand the culture. So I had to teach basic algebra to um, group of kids, to young people that couldn't read or write. So we're in a in a classroom, and these are high school students, anywhere from the age of uh, not from ninth grade to eleventh grade. And these students came in, and I had to figure out how to teach them math because <laughs> I was it was thrown in my lap. So I thought, well, I'm going to utilize the variable of algebra, but I'm going to use terms they understand. So when I said, you know, um, A equals, you know, A, the equation A equals um, A times 5 is, is 100. They, they couldn't figure that out. But I said, well, if I give you five dubs, how much is that? Oh, that's $100. You know, um, a bean is $100 in Philadelphia. So if I said, you know... You know, what's uh, a half a man, two uh, two dubs, and, and a bean? So that's $190. So <clears throat> I had to translate that language, show them you were using variables and you've been doing algebra the entire time. The language was different. And once they were able to see the language, they picked up on the basic pre-algebra mm-hmm. lessons that we had for them to do yeah. in school. But it did, yeah. so it wasn't, yeah. a, a, it wasn't, an indictment on the intelligence, they just didn't understand the language. And I'm dealing right. with that right now with college students. Mm-hmm. We're taking classes right now, very bright, very smart, but they've never been introduced to the language. Right. And once they learn right. the language of the classes, be it chemistry, biology, be it coding, be it tech, once they learn the language, they pick it up like that. But they don't, they have to get through the language barrier first. My, my question for people is, Given the history that black people have had in America, why shouldn't black children be behind white children? Because now we're putting some perspective to this. So, um, because he he talked about the uh the NAEP, go to that for statistics. That's the National Assessment of Educational Progress. So I'm looking at this this information, and this comes from um the uh US Department of Education. And it's given a reading scale scores of fourth grade students by race and, eth- race and ethnicity. So like we said earlier, this, they're giving you fourth grade, eighth grade, and 12th grade. So 
black children are uh, well let me share my screen let me share my screen so y'all can see what i'm saying so bam see white american indian asian pacific islander you can see where the asian pacific islander is above the the white and above the american indian alaskan native um and you see uh hispanic is where the hispanic and black and as it uh flattens out over the 2017 kind of hispanic and black kind of at the same level and whites asians and pacific islanders all kind of flatten out at the same level like well, well we're talking about historical precedents though when it's looking at this the total this is the scale score so uh what is the the, the national the average national assessment so it's showing you the level that black children are at black and this is black fourth graders compared to white compared to hispanic and all other racial groups all, all other groups and 206 is below the total of the average like why why wouldn't black children be behind this is eighth grade eighth grade is the same thing as it as the years go the blacks and the hispanics kind of flatten out but the blacks look like the blacks are a little, little slightly under the hispanics the asians pacific islanders are slightly above the whites well but people that people that genuinely study and understand and are trying to do something to close the racial gaps the people that are genuinely trying they understand this this has been a persistent and stable problem like and it's actually worse now because that doesn't show the impact of COVID. COVID fucked a lot of shit up in terms of the what was a pretty stable 10 to 10 to 20 percent advantage that white kids have. It grew during COVID. Um, and that's also something that is being talked about by people. And this is, you know, when you get into these conversations and you start like in terms of closing that gap um because that and that's a whole other conversation because one of the reasons that gap is stabilized is because even if you equalize the education during the school year during those gaps or those breaks in the educational period the gaps reestablish themselves because white families and, and wealthy families have the resources and the access and the opportunities to send their children to learning environments during educational breaks uh, something that black families that's what i'm getting at do. like the resources we do have we don't use them in the proper way to make sure our children but you said you're talking about people who are genuinely wanting to close the gap so do they like because the gap is there because the gap is there because of white supremacy the system of white supremacy that's why the gap is there the gap is there to make sure that white children white. always have what they need and it's not on white people to make <laughs> make sure black children got what they need the school system wasn't set up for that so we know we continue to put our our children in these systems and we don't and we don't invest in our children like we're supposed to with the resources that we do have yes we do not have the resources that the asians or the whites have but we do have resources black america is just not totally depleted of resources and so part of it is you know structural historical white supremacy but part of it is you know we're not really pouring back in like we should as a whole and also another part of like we talked about earlier the parents who don't have the skills and the information they can't help us like it's a it's this shit is layered it's not as easy and, and cut and dry just to say well the black children can't read well why our black children underperforming to white people not but if you really go and i'm gonna put the links to this is in the description if you really look at uh the, the actual reading uh levels for black children has improved a bit it's still behind whites and asians and pacific islanders but it has improved a bit matter of fact it's improved for all the kids except right. for when they get to the 12th grade level well, yeah <clears throat> well and, <clears throat> yeah perfect. Sorry. no go ahead pc what all these other groups have in common that we don't is they have more stable family environments and so and and, and we've seen that when you have a two-parent household or you have a household run by men where the father has um custody of the children 
that they perform better academically, they perform better socially, and they're less likely to be incarcerated. They're more likely to, to be some sort of, um, make some sort of contribution to, to society. This is not a jab at single mothers. This is just speaking the truth about the matter here. And then, you know, um, it's funny because I was just talking to a group of um, college students earlier today, and um, and we were talking, and one of them brought up the fact that, you know, I say they want to save the black community. The best thing they could do is to create a stable family, become yeah. part of a stable family, to rap, move themselves from drill four culture, from drill kill culture, from drill music culture, move themselves from those things and focus on establishing um, families based on integrity, trust, and respect and responsibility. And um, one of the students, you know, and I gave him the example that we saw with, um, I think, Yala Van Zandt, where she had, um, it was six men on the state. And you had six men who had children by collectively, by 50 different women, who collectively had 87 children. And when you think about that, that means basically you have 50 single mothers who were who have 87 children that are not going to receive the proper supervision of a father or have the proper influence of a father because there's no way in hell if i am a man and i have women by six or seven children i mean six i have uh, children by six or seven women and that could be up to 10 to 15 children there's no way i could spread myself that thin and still try to survive out here in this world. And so when you speak to, to the, the, the unstable or the disabled, the, the, excuse me, the instability of, you know, the black community, if that, that's where the fault lies right there. And the thing is, you know, we have so many people talk about breaking generational curses, meanwhile, maintaining the same behaviors that created the curse to begin with. And now the curse of single parent households have been exacerbated because nobody wants to be policed. Nobody wants to fall in line with a culture that says, you know, you have to be conservative and you have to practice restraint and discipline. You have to have boundaries. Nobody. And I'm not blaming, not, and I'm not, not blaming the men who indulge in this, but you had six men who made bad decisions and 50 women who made bad decisions. Do the math. You know what I'm saying? And so the children suffer. The community suffer because in a two parent household, and I've, and like I said, I've worked in these households um, out in the county, be it the, the piss poor um, white folk and as well as the well-to-do top 1% white folk. I've worked in their houses as therapists and to see the dynamic that take place when you have a two-parent household is totally different than when you have one parent trying to take on two and three jobs and then assigning the responsibility of, of raising the children to the older siblings in the house. There, and then you have a situation like in Baltimore where you have a young man who is looking to prepare for his prime, but he can't go on his prime because he just found out that he hadn't passed any classes in senior high school. So that he had to go back. I think they were able to figure out a way to finagle a way for him to still get his degree. But the bottom line is he, he found out he was spent, he had missed over 100 days of school. Why is he missing over 100 days of school? Because mom has three full-time jobs. And he has two younger siblings. You do the math. You understand what's happening here. So we got to get out of this place of denial and be more accountable about how we get into these situations so we can break these particular circumstances right. that are creating these situations. But but with all that you just said and what Pat was saying earlier, isn't it disingenuous to say that you want to close the education gap, the wealth gaps and all these gaps? It's disingenuous to say you want to close these gaps, but you don't want a nation build. The root of the problem is systemic. Now, only way to fix that is to be under another system that's favorable to you. And if you're not doing that, you're being disingenuous about closing the gaps because the gaps aren't going to close under the system because the gaps aren't designed to close under the system. So if you want to close the gaps, matter of fact, you get rid of the gaps all together. Stop worrying about closing the gaps and create our own system to thrive under, to exist under. And therefore, we will stop comparing us because all of this, all of these reading statistics and these reading levels are being compared to whites and Asians. And we're in a system that's not designed for us to win. 
and we got the nigga mindsets. So we holding ourselves back as well. Well, what Joe, look, here? look at the cliff. Who was who was fighting who? But that's it but no building. <laughs> no, I, I, right? But but it's it's. I'm listening to that, but then I listen to what Pat's saying about the people who genuinely want to close the gaps, and it's kind of pissing me. Those people are pissing me off because I'm like. Are these people talking about any type of real nation building or building any real systems that we can be up under and well, no. not have to worry about being part of somebody else's system? Well, no, because so what are we family, talking about? Well, this, and this goes into the education piece, and this it, it also goes into the understanding that most of the things we do in life are skill based, and if nobody's around to to give you those skills, to help you develop them, to teach you those skills, you're not going to learn them, which is the whole problem with the whole, like there, I'm a big fan of personal accountability versus social accountability. Both things are needed in a successful society. You need people to be accountable for what they need to be accountable for, but then society, the systems have their own measures right. of accountability and it be, it becomes a broken argument. When you say the problem, the reason why children can't read is because their parents aren't teaching them when most of their parents also struggle with reading. It becomes a it becomes a thing where it's like, OK, well, who's going to teach them to read then? And I think one of the reasons why I I I because everybody's so focused on closing the gap that nobody is when well, I won't say nobody, but there aren't enough people that are paying attention to the fact that the gap is stable, which supports what you just said, Joe. The gap right. is stable. That For means 50 it, years. that means it's systemic. That means the gap is, at this point, by design. It's there. It's not going to... Which means, which takes us back to the accountability piece, right? Because in order to close the gap, you've got to do extra shit. When you look at right. the Asian community, and I love talking about them because we love referencing them, but we don't really talk about all the work that they put into to, to restructuring and reshaping. And there's a wonderful book on it called The Model Minority. It's about the creation of the model minority. I forget the author's name, but she does a pretty, and there are several books on it, but she does a pretty good job of introducing non-Asian people into all of the work that went on behind the scenes in Asian communities going back to the to the uh the 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 teens the 20s 30s and 40s and carrying forward um but you, you we talk about it now they have saturday schools they kids go to school 5 days a week learning this stuff and then they have saturday school where they go to school and learn more stuff like if you want to get better than people that are doing better than you, you have to do more work. And that is the part where I'm like, it's disingenuous because we can yell and scream about the system all we want. In order for the system to change up, it's going to have to give less to white people and more to everybody else. And the system is not designed to do that. So right. as a culture, the socially responsible thing, the culturally responsible thing to do would be for black people to say, OK, we are going to make our kids do extra. But that goes against the other narrative we have, which is our kids don't have the freedom to be children. So we just want them to be children. Well, you can't do both. Either you're going to close the gap and make these kids work. Are you not going to worry about the gap and let these kids be kids? But you got to make up your mind and stop complaining. Well, it, I'm going to tell you. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. Now, just real quick. It's, it is this. And I agree. We we all agree with the young man when he's saying this, this and James, just to say black boys read at a fourth grade level because there's no context to that. But it's also this and James to say that black children can't read and then don't put any context uh, uh, supporting why black children can't read and then we don't do anything to check to to 
to create something alternative to the system at hand that's failing black children. Black children are failing in the homes, in the communities, in the schools. This is bigger than us. My, look, well, you know, it's, it's, we want the gains without the sacrifice that comes with it. Right. And, and that's what Pat was alluding to a few minutes ago. You know, I mean, we don't have a problem with putting our children in adult spaces when it comes to cooking and um, household chores and, and the maintenance of the home. We don't mind that part, but when it comes to academia, you know, instilling certain virtues and values into them, then all of a sudden, you know, well, I don't want to put too much pressure on them this, and I don't want to press them that. And then there's something that Dr. Um, Joy DeGroy was talking about in one of her videos. And and this is something that happened where, you know, um, she was at a, a conference, and um, she saw this white woman and this black woman that were there with the two sons. And the... Um, Black son had clearly outperformed the white son. Mm -hmm. And so the um, you know, but the, the but the mother of the son of the of the black child went over to compliment the white child. And when the white mother returned the favor, she instantly started downgrading her son's achievements, being dismissive. Oh, he you know, he's you know, he's really he he can be he, he's not doing as well this and doing as well that. In other words, she was very dismissive of his achievements. And, you know, um, and it was like an epigenetic memory of trying to protect the son from looking, seeming valuable to white folk. But at the same time, not, not understanding the damage you create, because it's like I'm going to stop my son. My son is shiny, he has potential to be a warrior, has potential to be to excel, but I don't want my son to get killed. But OK, but then you'll 10 years later, you'll call him a bum for not achieving. I realized right. and extinguished that light in him when the torch was being being lit and being fueled by his achievement. And so I'm sorry. Ahead, I'm I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish up. I'm sorry. No, it, but, but, but it, and I'm gonna bring it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna land the plane on this. We can't have our cake and eat it too. All these groups were talking about sacrificing and still something into their groups in order to be who they are today. We learned that Asian children, and we, 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 I was learning this in the 80s, that Asian children academically put math and, and, um, and reading at a higher level um, in terms of importance in their homes and in their family. So they, they, put, they put more time into studying. Um, they put more practice into, you know, uh, what was called um, the um, best practices in terms of academics, um, academics and so forth. Even now, when I'm on college campuses, Asian students who are, who come out of our building, come out of our office, uh, when we close our office, they get together and they go off into the other part. They go back to the library because the library closes later and they created study groups as freshmen. We can't even get, we're trying to, con to convey or, or generate a culture of group study with our black students. It's been very hard because we've been all taught to be ruggedly individual and it's so ingrained in the culture that working together and building together it just seems it's just a foreign concept right now. And so that's a struggle with trying to get college students to do this and to understand the importance of leaning on each other and working with each other. These young people come into the office, especially the young men, they don't even feel like they have that they don't even feel as though they deserve access to the resources they have because it's been ingrained right. enough they have to do it from the muscle. So, you know, we have a long way to go in that particular thing. But if you want to talk about solutions oriented, then, then let's talk about you know, um, sacrificing um, our party time, sacrificing our hanging out. Yeah, I worked all week. I'm tired, but guess what? I have to, you know, do whatever I can to make sure my children don't have to be doing this shit when they get my age. You know, um, that we put something, we lay in foundation. I was explaining to a young group of children today, the students, that um, you said, how can we build a, you know, uh, a constructive black community? I said, in this particular society, you can't. Because you need a solid foundation. Right now, the black community is layered in quicksand. I'm not. I'm not saying I've done a very, very, very thorough, a uh, very, you know, like researching as far as finding as many statistics as I wanted to before we done the show about um, literacy levels for black children. But everything that I'm coming across is showing that literacy levels are not as bad as people are making them out to see and literally literacy level like i repeated earlier literacy levels are 
improving a bit. But if we're com continuously going to compare our children's literacy levels to whites and Asians, we'll always be behind. But from and I'll put the links of everything that I'm looking at in the description. But everything that I've looked at is it's not showing that literacy levels are like in the dumps. Like people are trying to say, like our children just can't read. Um, I do believe that there are sections of our children who can't read. But it's not as much as people are making it out to be. But also, like we were talking about, like Pat was talking about skills, skills based things. So black people who want to close the gaps, change the narratives, change the systems. Those of us who have the skill sets, we need to not only be working with children, we need to be working with parents, adults. Because we're talking about taking responsibility and building yourself up. Those of us who have the skills, go teach others, adults and children, the skills. You have to teach the adults so they can reinforce what you teach to the children. But those of us who have the information and the skill sets, all we have to do is give our time and our energy and our effort to helping ourselves, to helping our people. That's something we can do for ourselves if we really talking about closing the gaps. Well, guess what? It doesn't help to teach these children this information and send them home to people who can't help them. I'm that, I'm just saying that's something we could do for ourselves right there. Wait, and I think absolutely I agree with that. And that if we're being honest, the stats usually are not as bad as we're led to believe. Usually. Um, but where it's 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 competition based. Right. So, you know, and as long as we are in competition with these other groups, them doing better than us is going to be a problem. And as long as we don't have any means of rewarding um, our own children for their academic prowess, then, and, and to be clear, like when I say rewarding them, that means being able to offer them a solid paying job, being able to offer them a grant. That, that they can use to fund research. Being able to offer them, like that's how you reward academics. You give a person a means to provide for themselves and a family through their intelligence, through their ability to produce uh, academic resources, academic outputs. Uh, and that's something in the community that is not. Like there are a plethora of ways that we reward creatives. Even in terms of business, the entire way we, we view and structure business is either um, copycat or innovation, which is a direct form of, of creativity. I'm going to take something you did and I'm going to do it different. But neither one of those are true outputs or raw outputs of intelligence. Those are both creative outcomes that usually are enhanced by intelligence. Mm -hmm. A black person that spends all their life studying social and cultural issues in the community, which is a purely intellectual pursuit, has no means of paying their bills from that. And we've seen that over and over and over again. Time and time again. <laughs> Not learned any lessons by it. <laughs> right. Name me one black scholar that remained the scholar and ended up being able to provide for a family off their scholarship in, Dr. Any, ben. Meaningful, in any meaningful way. Dr. Ben. Then, Ooh, then, my bad. Dr. Yeah. Ben was homeless right. in an uh, um, old folks home and had to have an NBA player pay for his funeral even after donating his entire library to the Nation of Islam. But, but, but that goes back to that comment the young lady made there's no money in nation building it's so fucked up but it's so right the mindset well, is so fucked up but she's well, not lying well no we but see we gotta twist it again because there is money in nation building just not the intellectual structure of it right well yeah yeah put that context that's that's better right. because yeah, because if you if you build a nation, then you are, you can enrich yourselves as people. But the way we the way we go about trying to build a nation through the intellectual pursuit uh, uh, and being an academic and and trying to make a career out of that, there's no money in that, and that's that is 
an important part of nation building because it's the it's the giving people the information that they need because it's like the spark of it. It's the it's literally the 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 being able to build or being plumbing and all, those are the core institutions and skills, the trade skills are the core institutions, mm -hmm. skills that are needed in order to physically build a society. But a society isn't a physical thing. It is an institutional thing. It's an intangible thing. It is purely an intellectual and academic construct. And we don't believe in paying teachers and, and, and or intellectuals or educators. And right. we believe, but we benefit from it. I mean, the whole black manosphere benefits from Tommy J. Curry, the man not. He was sort of like the first person to actually put it into perspective. But if you see people and you see in the black manosphere, who I mean, not just the black manosphere, but the manosphere period, who gets all the accolades is, is Jordan Peterson. And Dr. Tommy J. Curry's work is far more, you know, and you know, in depth, goes far more in depth and specifically to you know the conditions of black men, but it also breaks down all the totality of racism and its attack on black manhood. And so, but but you know, if you look at the the statue, you know, at the, globally, people can tell you who Jordan Peterson is, but they couldn't tell you who Dr. Tommy Jerry, Dr. Tommy J. Yeah. Curry was. And that in itself is something we're dealing with and experiencing in real time. You know, shout out to Dr. T. S. I. Johnson for pointing that out. I, but, I, and, I, I and learned I, who. I'm just gonna say I learned who Tom Dr. Tommy Curry was through Dr. T. Sign Johnson and through uh Rodney Smith. And you you mentioned him as well. So I'm so I have to I have to get up on Dr. Tommy J. Curry because I'm hearing people speak nothing but great things about him. So. Right, but and and this is all um like you <laughs> you and I'm familiar with um Dr. Curry, but I think it also speaks to the fact that many people don't even know what the output of an intellectual is. They don't even know what the output of an academic is. You say, uh, you, you tell smart. them any, any other thing in the community, they can give you the outcome, a ball player, entertainment, athlete, even they'll be wrong with it. They'll say uh, athletics, you know, you can catch that ball, but not as entertainment. But I get it, you have a concept, right? Plumbers. Fix the, the toilet so it flush. Uh, construction workers build a building. The electricians deal with the uh, the the electricity. What what do academics do? Uh, they uh, shit. I don't know what the fuck. They be smart. Do. Well, see, this is the pimping of the conscious community, though, and, it, and because the conscious community will pimp some information out of you for free, and then they'll say some dumb shit like knowledge is to be shared, it's not to be profited off of. Well, then shit motherfucker, me. why didn't you think of it then? Why well, can't if it's free? But, why didn't it just as free for you as it is for me? And your heart, yeah, that that yeah. I'm sorry. That, that, well, that, also that. education is a privilege, and people don't understand that. No, it is. If if you look at societies from the beginning of time to now, only the privileged people were had access to education, and so we have to look at that in the context of looking at why black children's educational levels are below whites and Asians. It's access. Do you have access to education? And and this is where you, this is where we have to also say life's not fair, get a helmet. Like because the fact of the matter is a certain level of education, sure, we would love for it to be an entitlement for all of our children. And that's our responsibility to do that. Yeah. But on another level, there is a higher form of education that has always been restricted, always been prohibited. And that is what college is supposed to, secondary education. Everybody is not supposed to be able to have a degree. Right. It breaks the system. When everybody, it breaks every, you can't name a system where everybody having a bachelor's degree is beneficial for the society. Because yeah. at that point, the bachelor's degree becomes a high school diploma. Yep. Which is kind of what it's become, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now, so now you need a master's degree and they are now, uh, guess what? Masters are expensive.
Be PC and I was just talking about that just yesterday. Yeah. That's the barrier to entry. Mm -hmm. If you can't pay for it, if you can't pay for education, you can't get it. But people that don't have an education need to understand, and this is a societal issue. You're not having an education as value to the education, but it also adds value to you. Because if you don't have the resources to get a master's degree, right, but you're clamoring for everybody to get one, and, and the only way to get one is to go into debt, well, now not only have you devalued the degree, but you devalue your earning, your earning potential, period, in getting one. Because if you're $70,000 in debt to get a degree that is going to only earn you, we say, $40,000, $50,000 a year, well, now that comes out of your earning potential, the debt that you've accrued, and the interest on top of that. Now we're having a whole different conversation about the value that degree has on your life. But then the fact that everybody has one means that you have to get one, means that you have to go in debt unless you got it like that. And it becomes like this spiral. This neck, And so we need to have these serious conversations about, okay, should certain levels of education be out of reach? I think so. But yeah. there needs to be opportunities for people that don't have access to those forms of education to be able to provide for themselves. Well, that's not an educational conversation. That's an infrastructure conversation, but we don't make that transition from saying, okay, well, the education piece is here, but there's an infrastructure piece here. Why can't you pay all your bills with a high school diploma? That's not an education conversation. But you, right, right. And on top of that, like people are saying, I want more black kids to have access to this. I want more black kids to have access to this. I want more black kids to have access to this. So how are you helping them get that access? Because it's not up to another group of people to give our children access or information. It's up to us. But as long as we continue to put our children in a white, a, a white ran school system. And as long as we offering our kids up to somebody else to educate our kids and give them what they need to be an intellectual or to even get vocational skills, why wouldn't you expect the gap? Don't tell me racism exists and then it's like, well, we should be closing the gap. Why? How? When? Where? You, you, you know, um, the funny part about that, um, because uh, there's so many people that want they, they, they want so much because they don't understand systemic racism or what white supremacy truly is that they don't want to acknowledge it because they want to be mainstream. And because of that, they, they sort of like dance to go through all these hoops and, you know, jump through all these you know, bells and whistles or whatever. Um, but basically, they don't understand what racism is because... Clear. If, 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 if we say it's systemic, that there's a system in place, order of operations that occur, policies that are in place. We just talked about this last week with the Enigma and the Labyrinth and all that. Well, two weeks ago, the Enigma, Labyrinth and the, all this other stuff that we're dealing with. I mean, if, if you can't figure it out, then this conversation is too mature for you and to be not to be able to understand it. To say, you know, you want to lay down and just take it as, as something different than saying that I understand that we're up against something systemic and that this is either we form a, find a way to create our own system, which we often have said that shit is damn near impossible at this point, or we find a way to, to tear into this one. But it all starts with us making, you know, uh, making a concerted effort to first understand what the real problem is and then from a place of good faith try to operate and configure a solution that benefits not just the individual but that benefits the collective and so but until we um and i'm not sure I'm, and i'm not gonna say until we do it if we ever get around to doing that then that'd be a beautiful thing i think black people are far too demoralized right now so everything that we talk about is you know um a wish, you know, a wish and a prayer. And um, 
and that's why we consistently, you know, um, have people throwing darts in the air and, and making um, non-arguments out of situations without proposing any solutions, like we said, the clip that started the show. Mm -hmm. what, what, what you, I, I think that's a great sum because, you know, you when you don't really understand racism, you're trying to make a point. People who do understand racism are going to be looking at you and scratching your head, and you're going to confuse the people who don't understand racism even more. Right? And so with that clip, I, I know for me personally, I didn't want to get caught up in the minutia where they were saying certain some things just clear, like you point this out, but you did. You literally did the same thing. But looking at, okay, Cool, we're going to debunk that black boys read at a fourth grade level. But then you throw out where well, black children can't read. Now, let's say black boys could. It was true that black boys were reading at a fourth grade level. Well, the question is why? And then if you say, well, the parents aren't helping them. Well, why? Well, the parents, uh, the parents don't know how to read. Well, why? Let's keep going. Let's keep asking why till we get to the root of the problem. Because if we never deal with the root, what are we doing? It's try to try to kill a weed without getting it from the root. See what happens. It's gonna keep coming back. It's gonna get stronger and stronger and stronger. And to be clear to the to the to the young man, whoever he is, I know that video is. I think it's a year old or two years old, something like that. He might not even feel that way anymore. I agree with you, Joe. It's a great way to segment into the conversation um but i you know i'm gonna I'm stand on it if you're critiquing people with that kind of gusto you need to be prepared for somebody to critique you the same way and 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 i wear that like i stand on that if i do a, a if i'm a part of a breakdown and somebody disagrees with the way I broke it down and they decide they want to critique me the same way I critique other people. Cool. Wonderful. Do your thing. I'm going to look at it and laugh. Because it's going to be funny. <laughs> yeah, but but like we always, like we are getting that, man, perspective is needed. And we do need people to not be intellectually lazy and make sure you do um, look into the information that people talk about. Um, I, I wasn't necessarily looking for the information he was talking about. I was looking for information period to show where the reading levels for black children. And it brought me to some of the same information that he was talking about. So like I say, the, the links for, I have four, four websites up. The link for those will be in the bio. So y'all can look at what I was looking at, but also lead you looking at your own information and stuff. But, Put away the intellectual laziness. Put away the disingenuous points. And stop trying to be the blackest or the smartest person in the room. But just really think about it and look at it in the simplest forms. Why are the achievement gaps not getting smaller? It's been 50 years and achievement gaps have been static for 50 years. Black, black, if black children's reading levels increase, white children's reading levels increase. But the achievement gap stays at least 30 percent and it's not getting any smaller and nobody's questioning that for how many people even know that the gap is stagnant like pat said earlier that's proof right there that it's systemic right but to fix a systemic issue you have to replace it with another system especially a system that hasn't worked for you in over 500 years. You got to replace it with another system, a nation within a nation. If you're really trying to solve the issue, if you ain't doing that, then you really just complain. And once again, those of us who have skills and have the information, get off of our asses and go teach the other people who don't have the skills and information. And now we're talking about tangible progress. But hey, what do we know? Joseph Ward, Professor Carl Tone Jones, Patrick Irving. Yeah, we said it.
we catch y'all next time. Oh, FatLifeStation.com, 7 p.m. FatLifeStation.com, 7 p.m. We out.